The couple are set to travel to Sandringham, the Queen's former home, later today. The Prince and Princess of Wales will travel to Norfolk today to view flowers for the Queen left by well wishers at her former home Sandringham's Norwich Gates. The Norfolk home reportedly held a special place in her late husband Prince Philip's heart, being his favorite place to spend time. Tributes to the Queen, including flowers and cards, have been left at Sandringham, Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle and Balmoral since her death. Prince William and Kate, Princess of Wales, are set to travel to Norfolk today to view flowers for the Queen left by well-wishers at her former home. Meanwhile, the Earl and Countess of Wessex, Sophie, and Edward, will go to Manchester to view the Civic Book of Condolence, view floral tributes and light a candle at Manchester Cathedral in memory of Her Majesty the Queen. Last week, the Prince and Princess of Wales stepped out alongside Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex to look at tributes to Queen Elizabeth II at Windsor Castle. A royal source said William, who has since been made Prince of Wales, thought it was an important show of unity at an incredibly difficult time for the family. The Sussex's biographer Roman Scobie tweeted that William had made the decision to invite Harry and Meghan in the 11th hour. All four royals took bunches of flowers to contribute to the tributes and shook hands with people who had come out to meet them. Royal commentator Richard Fitzwilliams said the joint appearance suggests the brothers are making real progress in healing their reported drift. He described Harry and Meghan's attendance at the walkabout as a sensational surprise. The commentator also claimed it is very possible that Harry will take on an active role in upcoming arrangements for the Queen's mourning period. Queen Elizabeth II died earlier this week, on September 8 at Balmoral Castle aged 96. Since her death, Prince Charles has undertaken non-stop public duties. But today he and his wife Camilla, Queen Consort, had been given their first full day off. The King returned to his Highgrove home yesterday afternoon for a day in private. Grieving members of the public have been queuing since yesterday to attend the late Queen's lying-in state which begins at 5 p.m. on Wednesday. It will continue until 6.30 a.m. next Monday, the day of the state funeral. People have flocked to the capital to wait for hours to pay their respects to the late monarch. It was initially estimated that 40,000 people would turn up each day to pay their respects. But Whitehall chiefs in charge of logistics for the five-night vigil have since estimated that more than 750,000 may wish to attend. Infrastructure has been set up in preparation for miles of queues. Private security staff and stewards in Hybas Vests and Metropolitan Police officers have been stationed along the route since 9 a.m. on Tuesday. Visitors will need to go through airport-style security checks and are only permitted to bring one small bag with them. The Queen's coffin arrived at Westminster Hall yesterday to lie in state following a poignant procession from Buckingham Palace led by King Charles. The King, in his field marshal uniform, walked in line with his siblings Princess Anne, Prince Andrew, and Prince Edward. Prince William and Prince Harry followed behind with Peter Phillips. A gun carriage that had borne the coffins of her mother and father carried the late monarch to Westminster Hall as funeral marches were played by military bands. Thousands of well wishers, many in tears, gathered in central London to see the late Queen departing the official residence where she spent so much of her working life at the heart of the nation. Dozens of wider members of the royal family attended the service including Princesses Eugenie and Beatrice and their husbands, Zara and Mike Tyndall, Lady Louise Windsor Viscount Severn, Lord Freddie Windsor, Prince and Princess Michael of Kent, and the Duke of Kent. <laughs>